Let's go. What's up, Money Geeks? Mr. V here. Welcome to another video, guys. So in this video, I want to break down some of the trades that I did today. Um, just kind of go through it and give you guys the reasons why I did the trades that I did. And um, maybe you guys will learn something out of it. So I want to break that down for you. So we actually did the following trade, uh, GRTX, just so you guys know. This trade was actually an overnight trade. Um, and I'm going to explain that once we get to the charts. I'm going to show you guys how um, the trade came about. And then did a little bit of Pinterest and then uh, some NEO after hours. Um, and then uh, MVIS as microvision and then uh, EDR. So as you can see there, we had two green trades and then three red ones. Even though the NEO trade uh, after hours, I was just testing it to see. I wasn't really uh, going into the trade like trading. I was just testing something to see if it worked or not. Uh, the microvision one that's the one i was i'm disappointed with that trade uh the egr i'm also really disappointed you can see 180 bucks um on that one that i gave away so let's jump right in here um and kind of take a look so this is um grtx so again like i said this particular trade was um uh, an after hour trade so i didn't i didn't do the trade uh regular hours so yesterday after hours if you can see here um, this was the 28th after hours. This stock was just quiet all day um, on the 28th. And then after hours, they had some news that their cancer uh, test or medication came out positive. And, and that was really good news. And so, again, cancer is something that um, affects a lot of people. So uh, news like this is something that you would always see some positive feedback uh, from uh, traders. People respond to good news like this, not just because the company said the news was good, but they know how it would impact uh, people's life when they get good news. And so uh, it ripped right um, at close and all the way to, to from so right here from like six dollars and some change all the way to 868 so i missed this first phase of the run so and i was patient fomo is not a disease that i want to have so i missed this first uh run right here so okay i and I, the news told me that there's still an opportunity for this thing to run so if you can see uh pull back below vwap and just kind of stay there uh, tested VWAP here, and I didn't I didn't take a trade there because I didn't see anything uh, any opportunity. So I pulled back again and just kind of um, barcode here below VWAP until um, somewhere around five fifty, almost six o'clock. That's where I started to rip back up. So uh, when I saw this um, this cross right here, we can see where uh, stochastic here it crosses, and so I looked at that volume came in. And so I got in this trade around eight dollars, just somewhere right there above VWAP. So I got in there, it squeezed up all the way to forty-five, and I'm in the money. But I'm like, now nah, I think this thing has an opportunity to run. And then it pulled back all the way back to eight dollars, and I'm like, shoot, I left money on the table, which I did because if I sold up here and then bought back down here, that would have been good. But I mean, I didn't. It's after hours. Um, there's no guarantee that you're going to get filled when you want it to. So I just like, you know what, I'm going to, I know the news is good. So I'm going to stick with this one. Um, and then it ripped back up again until um, um, seven when the market closes my time, 7 p.m. Central time and the market closed. Um, so the market closed, I was in the green a little bit, but so I held it overnight. So now comes the 29 market opened and um, I got up early and I'm watching it. Um, so it squeezed up, um, you can see here around four, four twenty-five my time AM, it started to rip. So right here, I just kept thinking like, come on, man. Cause I thought like, as soon as the market opened, this thing was going to gap like crazy, but the market opened, it didn't gap. I still held my grant. I didn't want to panic at that point. Um, so I held, I kept watching it, but the good thing that kept me in the trade, they gave me some confidence to see is kid right here, just right above VWAP. So the consolidation stayed above VWAP. Um, re remember, my, my entry point was about eight dollars. So it's, even right here, I was still a little bit green, but not as good. And then um, before I see right here, look at the volume down here. So again, like I said, if you don't have this volume um, uh, widget on your your charts, you should definitely add it. So just go add the volume widget. It really gives you some clarity. 
So volume pops right in here. And I'm looking at, oh, this is good. It rips all the way to nine, like 925 or 927. So I'm like, okay, keep going, boy. Next thing you know, it goes to 940 and then start pulling back. Um, and then this is where I got a little bit nervous. So right here, stochastic actually crosses. So my K crosses to the downside. And I'm like, oh, shoot, what's going on here? I hope this thing doesn't start uh, just uh, squeezing to the downside. Then it held again. I'm still in the morning. I didn't want to like cut, take profit and run so quick. Then right here, this is what makes me happy. And just so you guys know, I had my take profit or my sell order at $10. That was my goal. So I wanted $2 spread. So it went, I got in at $8. I had an order ready to go at $10. So if it hits 10, sell. And I was going to sell 100% of my position. I wasn't even going to hold anything. That was just my strategy for this particular trade. And so um, right here, volume comes right in again. We can see here, look at this huge volume. It just rips all the way to 1080, I think 10.18 or 10.1. Yeah, 10.18. But the good thing is my stop, my the sell order was at $10. So, so I sold here at $10. And then it went to 10.18 and then pulled back. So I was like, okay, that's cool. So if I left some money on the table, that's fine. At least $2 spread, I can't complain. But that was perfect timing. And guys, this is just me looking at, and I was watching the trade because like I said, I had an order going. I could have pulled this thing down. If I saw it, if it came to this, let's say 9 point nine zero and found some 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 resistance right here i'll have to pull my order down and just set it there and take profit and get out i mean 10 cents i don't want to give back all the money i made just because of 10 cents uh per share so i just waited but the volume came in and it got to ten dollars got me out and then um you see pull back look at this red candles right here massive pullback and then um and i'm just sitting there watching um, for a little bit, it pulled back and then I went back to sleep. Um, mind you, that was still like four, four thirty or four. I'm mean, sorry, four forty-five my time. So I went back to sleep. Um, I already taken my profits. So I was feeling good. And then uh, just to get up early in the morning again, realized that it came down back to like eight seventy and then ripped back to almost ten dollars. As a matter of fact, nine ninety nine. That's ten dollars. So I missed this run right here, but I mean. Uh, again, like I said, I was in the money, so I didn't I didn't really cry that much. Um, so I missed this one completely. But this this would have been a sweet trade because right here, look at this from eight seventy five. Again, I don't I don't like trading below VWAP, even though I'm going to show you guys a trade that I did uh, um, today um, coming soon here. But look at that volume crosses right here, sweet volume. You go you, you get in here right like let's say I like. Um, 9.2 and ride this thing all the way to 9.9 .9, take profit and get out uh but i didn't trade it so missed that one so got up in the morning had this on a watch list again for those of you that are not part of our discord server links in the description uh click it come join it's free uh hang out and just talk with other people that are passionate about trading like 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 you do so again i had this on my watch list so market opens and I'm looking like, okay, so we had a pre-market high of $10.18, right? So I'm looking $10.18. I was hoping this thing was going to come out of the gate and rip to um, that $10.18 and just keep going. At least I was looking for like $12 uh, for the day. So I was hoping to trade this. So right out of the gate, it spiked up to $10.11 and then pulled back and that was it. And I kept waiting for opportunity, thinking this thing was going to get back on track, and it never did. Look at the entire day, it traded below VWAP and never gave any opportunity again. So I'm happy that I traded it pre-market. Um, happy again that I wasn't trigger happy um, to jump in the trade, even though the, I didn't see any great opportunities there. So um, that's how this one ended. And you see, and that was it. Nothing again all day. It just completely fell flat on his face. So that's first one. So second one is microvision. So this one, again, I had this one on the watch list and I was looking at this one. Market opened. Um, so I didn't I didn't I didn't do any trades uh 
pre-market for this particular one. So let me get back here so we can actually see. Oh man, where did I go? Okay, so right here, here we go. So market opens and I'm looking at this like, okay, this is good. It pulls back, I'm like, good. Found support right here, like 1930, and then started curling back up, crosses VWAP. First one minute candle makes a new high. So I got in here, got in like 19, I think 1980 uh, or so, somewhere around there, 1980. Uh, and then so it squeezed up and I, I was nervous here because if you notice, look at these, these candles, they're not like uh, clean candles. Look at those dojis um, on, on either side. So I didn't like that, but I kept thinking, you know, uh, this was gonna pan out, but look at volume two wasn't really coming in. It was just flat. So I gave it a little bit of opportunity. It, it got up here to like uh, 2050, uh, 2059, and then just turned around and like pulled back and just pulled back. And by by the time I could even move my stop loss, it, it just like flushes and, and kicked me out. So I took an L in this one, but I mean, it is it is what it is. So I, I, can't, I can't really complain for that particular trade. I, at least I got out, I got out as soon as I could, um, and that was it. It pulled back and never got to that high of twenty dollars again for the day. Um, that was it. And then <clears throat> after hours, their earnings came out and it just crumbled. Look at that! It just went from the eighteen dollars high after hours down to currently sitting at fourteen dollars and seventeen cents. So this right here, that's a perfect candidate for a swing trade. So I might have to pick up some shares, um, start picking up some shares here for a possible string trade on Microvision here. So uh, yeah, so I start small and then add my position. If it can, if it continues to drop, then I'll, I'll, I'll add some more. Um, then to squeeze back to at least that kind of eighteen, nineteen dollars um, to sell and take profit. So that's that one. So the, uh, the other stock that I traded was um, EDR. So this one. It was it was a really difficult one to trade because this was an IPO. So this is our parent company um, of UFC company that owns UFC. So um, this one wasn't our an IPO that was out there. A lot of people, nobody was really talking about it. So it's like you know, I'll take a chance here um, uh, because if you trade with Weibo in the Weibo uh, mobile app, if you go under the IPO center. You can see all the IPOs that are coming out that day, so it's easy for you to find out. To so go there, that's how I just that's that's where I get all the IPOs that I trade. Um, some I know the companies and I know they're going public. Um, others I just go in there and look at some of the companies that are going public. I didn't even um, I, I haven't been tracking EDR until um, I kind of went in that Weibo IPO center and discovered that they were going public and had some association with uh, UFC. Uh, this one opened up. Uh, twenty six dollars, I think. Squeeze up to twenty eight forty seven, and then pull back. And I'm thinking most of these IPOs, this is how they usually do. You come out, squeeze up a little bit, pull back, reload, and then just go crazy, make a massive run. So I was hoping that I was going to be the same trend here. But again, guys, you cannot just think that things are going to go the same way over and over and over. So this time around, it failed me. And um, and I, I made a very crucial mistake here with the assumption and the knowledge that I had that this particular um, that most IPOs have been uh, coming out of the gate, uh, squeeze up, pull back, and then uh, skyrocket. So I thought that was going to happen here, but it never did. So I got into this trade right here. So pulled back here. I'm looking at this opportunity. So right here, um, just below VWAP. Mistake number one, guys. I broke my own rules for this particular trade, um, and that's the that's the thing. Like when you have a you have a strategy that works, don't deviate from it. And learn from my mistake, guys. I broke my own rules. You guys know I I say this every time on the channel. I don't like trading below VWAP unless it's kind of like a swing trade or something. I don't day trade below VWAP just because. I like trading momentum. I like trading it when it's moving up. I don't like trading below VWAP because you don't know where the bottom really is. So especially for an IPO like this that you don't even know, it has no history that we can learn from. I, there's no support, there's no resistance. The thing just came out of the gate. So, um, so I got in um, somewhere here and then hoping that I was gonna squeeze back up 
uh, and go test that 28, 47, and even and then set a new high. Um, that never happened. It got up here at 26, 75, and then just pulled back. And I kept, I gave it an opportunity right here. It came down, down here at 25 or uh, and some change. And I was about a dollar uh, down and this one, a dollar per share down. So I kept giving it an opportunity. And then I look at stochastic here, crosses. I, I saw this little spike in volume. Uh, not that much volume, but a little spikes. So I kept thinking like, okay, hopefully this is a reverse that we're heading back where we're supposed to be going. And so, because I like one-way traffic, to go up, up and up and up. I don't like you coming back down. So um, a squeeze up here, test VWAP and fail. And then just kind of barcode right along VWAP here. And I kept giving an opportunity, um, kept giving opportunity. I held, and this was painful sitting in this trade. Cause I just came like break, just go. I'm looking like volume, come in, let's go. Here I got another spike in volume. I thought this thing was gonna break through VWAP, nothing. Um, only to watch it. Finally, it just started pulling and heading south. Um, and I had to drop the towel. I didn't. I didn't have a choice. I mean, um, good thing I'd made some good money with my other trade, my GRTX trade. So I could, that's why I could even risk that. Otherwise, I would have cut my losses a long time like right here um, and reduce the amount of losses, I, the amount of loss I took there. So I could have cut my loss right there. But I, because I was in the money, I, I wanted to give it a little bit of time for the trade to develop, which never did. And um, ever since they pulled back down to 23 and some change, and then you can see, stayed below VWAP, only crossed VWAP again um, towards uh, closing. And then um, after hours, it, it kind of make a little bit of move, but nothing there. That's, that's about it. So um, that was a loser. And then I did a trade on NEO, um, and this was after hours. So if you can see here, uh, NEO after hours, their earnings uh, call came out. It, it wasn't as great as I was anticipating. Again, so Pinterest and NEO, those are two stocks that I wanted to swing for um, because of their earnings. But again, if we see the volatility in the, in the marketplace right now. It's just crazy, especially with uh, some of these um, uh, EV stocks and stuff like that. I don't, um, I mean, until we figure out what's going on there and fix that, you're going to keep saying the stocks struggle. So I took a really small position in in NEO um, just to test it. Like right here, it bounced back after this drop. It bounced back, crosses VWAP, and sat going up. So... I got in at 39 and some change here. I squeezed up like everything's like, okay, it's probably gonna go test 40, 41. Next thing I know, it just pulls back right down. I mean, it dropped like a rock. And so I just cut my loss. And I mean, it was a really small um, amount that I, I went in. So it wasn't that big. So I just I just cut my loss and, uh, and get out. So um, those are the trades that I did again. Um, overall, I mean, I think I learned my lessons. Um, hopefully, I don't have to make those mistakes again in the future. But let me know in the comment section what you guys think about this. Um, did you trade any of these stocks? If yes, which one did you trade and why did you take the trade? So um, I keep hearing from you guys the feedback that you guys enjoy these reviews. So I'm going to keep doing them when I have the opportunity um, and just put them out there. So. Uh, let me know again in the comment section if you do have any questions. If you're new to the channel, we talk about how to earn money, how to save money, how to invest and build wealth. So if you have something that interests you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on new content. Also, if you're looking to get started with investing, guys, Weibo has their promotion right now where if you sign up and deposit $100, you get some free stocks. And as always, guys... Do your due diligence, don't be a greedy savage, and stay motivated.